Hey guys, we're back for more Let's Play Knights of the Old Republic. Do you guys like magic? You like some magic tricks? Well, you can see I do not have any party members around. I don't know where they went. They just are not here. So let's walk down to this area and uh, kind of get uh, what was behind this out of view. So we go down here, maybe go a little bit further. Maybe down to here or something. We turn back around. And let's get all the way back to where we were. And ta-da! There they are! I don't know if they were further over there or not, but uh, anyway, they weren't there, that's, that's for sure. And what we're going to do, actually, we're going to go into the Republic Embassy. And we're going to have T3 just for, well... We're going to have to access some computers, so T3 is a lot better than I am, so we're going to use him. So let's talk to Roland Wan. Welcome to Manan. I'm Roland Wan. As the official representative of the Republic Embassy on this planet, I'm here to help all citizens of the Republic should they require aid. Why are your soldiers loading so much Kulto? Kulto is a precious resource. Its healing powers are near miraculous. During times of war, Kulto becomes even more valuable. As long as we have the permits, we will continue to harvest Kulto and ship it to our Republic soldiers battling against the Sith. Of course, the Sith enjoy the very same privileges. If there was some way we could gain an edge over the Sith and our Kulto supply. But the Selkath are fiercely protective of their neutrality in this conflict. They do not want to grant either side an advantage. Okay. Do I have any questions? Let's see. A beautiful place, Sato City. A paradise on the water. But remember, within the city itself, the Selkath have absolute authority. They're a tough race, but fair. Obey the Selkath laws, keep the peace, and you should encounter no problems. I assume you received a visitor guide to the city when you docked your ship. I regret there is little I can tell you that's not in the visitor guide, my good Jedi. My duties rarely permit me to venture beyond the walls of the Republic Embassy. Okay, well, I'm on a... No, I'm investigating the Sundry case. I don't know much about the facts of the case, but I find it hard to believe. I never met Sunri, but he's a hero of the Republic, not a murderer. The so-called evidence against him is an obvious frame-up. It has to be. The Sith must have plotted Sunri's downfall to embarrass and discredit the Republic. Any chance the Republic is involved? The Republic? That makes no sense. Sunri has no enemies in the Republic, and his conviction will make all of our jobs more difficult. If you want to solve this mess, I would focus on the Sith. That, or check out the murder scene at the hotel. Talk to the other guests. Maybe they know something. I regret I could not be of more assistance in your investigation. Is there anything else? Okay, well, I'm on a mission from the Jedi Council. Perhaps you can help me with it. Oh, of course. Of course, I'll do whatever I can. But I'm only a simple diplomatic representative of the Republic. I doubt I can be of any use to the Jedi Council. I seek a star map, the remnant of an ancient and forgotten race. An ancient and forgotten race? And you think it may be here on Manan? Hmm. You know something? Well, perhaps. But if you want to get information about that, you'll have to do something for me first. What do you want me to do? We were using a submersible reconnaissance droid in the ocean surrounding Otto City, and it was damaged. It took a data recording of the outside of the city before being driven off by the Firaxid sharks. But while it was returning to the surface, it encountered difficulties and was disabled. Its automatic systems floated it to the surface, but we could not retrieve it in time. The Sith were applying subtle pressure to the Selkath authorities for some reason we've not determined, and were able to delay us long enough that they could retrieve the droid before we did. The droid's data centers are heavily encrypted, so it will take the Sith several days, we believe, to get to its data. It was captured 12 hours ago. It is imperative that we get it back. Where is the droid? It's heavily guarded, we're sure, in the Sith Embassy here on Manan. Since we have no remaining soldiers to spare, and certainly not our elite ones, we have no one capable of entering the Sith base and retrieving it. That is what we would ask you to do. Let's see, how can I get into the Sith base? There are several leads we've been working on to get into the Sith base. Any of them should work for you although it might be wise to concentrate your efforts on just one. The first method that's possible is to help us interrogate a Sith prisoner we managed to catch after he tried to infiltrate our base. He's being held just inside our enclave. We think he may be able to give us the passcode that the Sith give their informers to enter the base. He has proved most 
resilient so far. Okay, is there another way? We managed to pick up a crate of blank Sith data cards, the type they use for pass cards. The encryption system to unlock them is very difficult, however. But if you are more skilled than our technicians, you may be able to gain access that way. Is there another way? The Sith have got the Seltcaf to give them exclusive use of one of the main hangar bays. Visiting Sith Masters use this bay to land, then take a speeder over the water to an external entrance to the Sith Enclave. The luckless spy we mentioned earlier had a pass card to that hangar on him. While it is surely well guarded, it may prove to be the most direct route. Here's the card. The Sith base itself is very heavily guarded. If they became aware of your presence, I fear you would be quickly outnumbered and killed. Here is a pass card to get you inside our facility. You should find all you need to get started in there. You can choose whichever of the methods you want, as long as you get in the base and get the data recording back. Which method do you think you would like to try first? Well, I'm gonna raid the damn landing bay. You'll need luck for that one. Odds are they have some pretty strong guards in there, but it's also the way most likely to succeed. I wish you luck in your task. Should you retrieve the data recording from the droid, return it here to me, and we can see about getting you that information. Okay, so we have what we need to do <clears throat> to find information about the star map, and now we have access to deeper inside the Republic Embassy, and there's a lot to do in uh, these two rooms, this room and the computer room. First of all, we have Lorgal, or, or whatever his name was, Lorsal, I don't know. Lorgal, okay. Yes, human, have you come to sneer and jeer like the others? Come to see Lorgal, the great liberator, caged like an animal. Let's see. Liberator, you're nothing but a murderer. Kill a million people with a mighty star cruiser and you are a war hero. Kill a hundred with a thermal detonator and you are a terrorist. Let's see, I'm, I'm here to kill you, Lorgal, and I think I'll enjoy it. There are many who want me dead, including the guards in this room, but the Republic doesn't kill prisoners without a trial. That is why I'm protected. This energy cage keeps me safe from blaster and blade. The Republic will keep me alive to tr uh, for transfer to Coruscant, and then all the galaxy will witness my trial. You cannot touch me in here, human. No conventional weapon can penetrate this cage. Nothing can stop me from spreading my manifesto during my trial. Oh, I could do that. Okay, use force choke. Yeah, we don't need a weapon. Suck it. Okay, you can also go to the terminal here and overload the cage or something like that. Uh, oh, I forgot T3 has a level up. Let's just go ahead and auto it. And back to me. Uh, let's do the prisoner in a second, because that can piss me off. So you're the one who's gonna try to get into the Sith base, eh? Huh, good luck, you're gonna need it. This is our main computer room here. We got the box of pass cards we got from the Sith, but we haven't been able to break their encryption yet. We have been able to decode the numeric system they use, but there are holes in our terminal sequence patterns. Wow, uh, terminal sequences? The strings of numbers that end the code sequences. If we could complete those strings, we would have the key to their encryption system. The encryption system is composed of six matrices. Each is based on a mathematical method. The holes we're missing are the final number in each of the strings. Most are simple, but the final two matrices seem to be much more difficult. The second last matrix has a pattern looping back on itself, or something. And the last is divided into smaller subparts. Maybe the pattern for that is within each part. But I have to admit, all this is a bit over my head. I haven't even been able to slice past the first matrix, and I've been at this for hours. I've ruined a dozen cards already. But the good thing is, we have a whole box of them, so you don't have to worry about running out anytime soon. Since Roland said you were cleared, you can use the computer freely. I'll be here if you have any questions. Alright, I feel sorry for him that he can't even make it past the first Matrix. That's really just sad. And he needs to be fired, and probably needs to go home and not be allowed to reproduce. But, um, alright. So, I'm gonna show each method to get the uh, Sith Pass cards. Including the slicing the pass card, interrogating, and go into the base and raiding it. So uh, let's just or go into the hangar and raiding the base. But anyway, let's use T3 first. Let's access the large computer. Let's slice the Republic system and access the restricted data archives. Downloading Sundry Incident Archive. What is this? The computer screen switches to a fisheye view from some sort of small surveillance device on the wall. A beautiful woman enters the room followed by a much older man. Just kind of automatically go to. I don't want to skip anything. 
Who? As she walks farther into the room, he softly closes the door, pulls a blaster, and shoots her in the back. This must be some sort of secret recording of Sunri murdering Elasa. Damn, he did it! We have a recording of it. Let's log off. So, yeah, we know that now. I guess we can just use T3 again. Let's decrypt the Sith Pass card. So, here's the first matrix, the one that the guy can't get past. It is the additive matrix. So, obviously, you're adding 1, you're adding 2, you're adding 3, 4, 5. So, you would add 6 to 16, which would be 22. Now, that's a subtractive. 21 minus 3 is 18, minus 2 is 16, minus 1 is 15, minus 0 is 15, plus 1 is 16, plus 2 is 18. Multiplicative. 1 times 2 is 2, times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is blah, blah, blah. So, 32 times 2 is 64. Div uh, divisive, divisive, however you say that. Uh, okay, 28 divided by 2. Uh, 64 divided by 2 is 32. Divided by 2 is 16. 8, 4, 2. Alright, exponential. This one's fun. So, 2 to the 5th power is 32. 3 to the 4th power is 81. 4 to the 3rd power is 64. 5 squared is 25. So that leaves 6 to the 1st power, which is 6. All right, logarithmic matrix. God, I hate logarithms. <clears throat> um, but uh, this isn't hard. Just uh, they use two, so two to the zero power is one, two to the three power is eight, two to the fifth power is thirty-two, and two to the seventh power is one hundred twenty-eight. And that's it. Card pro reprogramming success. That's it. We now have the uh, decrypted pass card. So now let's go over what? to the uh, interrogator and try to crack this Sith prisoner. I actually tried to do this before recording for like 15 minutes, and I got to where I think I had a, a quick way to do it. But uh, I was getting pretty frustrated. Just throwing pencils, yeah. But anyway, let's talk to the intelligence officer. So, you're the one Roland has got to help us interrogate this prisoner. I hope your Jedi powers will come in useful. This one has been most resistant. He's a Sith spy we picked up a little while ago, snooping around outside trying to get in. We thought he was suspicious and brought him inside when the Selkath weren't looking. But it seems the Sith have done a pretty good job of conditioning this guy, and we haven't been able to break him yet. What do they do to him? The Sith protect their really important spies with some sort of mental force feedback system. They can turn their minds in on themselves, so force compulsions won't affect them. Combine this with conventional training to resist interrogation, and sometimes it takes months to get them to tell what they know. Do you want to interrogate him now? Yeah. Well, the training the Sith gave him will protect him from most normal interrogation techniques, and also from force persuasion, we have found a few hooks you might find useful. He was with another man when he was first spotted. We think it was another spy, but we didn't manage to catch him. We also seized some personal documents he had on him when he was captured. It would seem that he's married to a woman named Tila. We checked this in our computers, and it seems to hold up. We've sent a couple of agents to investigate, but it may be a while. What do I have to work with? What we have here is your standard issue truth serum. It should make him spill his guts in no time. But there is a catch. A catch? There always is a catch. Because of his conditioning, he's able to resist it at small doses. But if you give him too much, his body realizes what you're trying to do and shuts his mind down completely. If you do that, you'll have to inject him with an antidote that neutralizes the truth serum. Unfortunately, that too has a drawback. I detect a pattern here. It causes short-term memory loss. This may work to your advantage because you can try the same tactic over and over again. But if you use it too much, he may forget everything we want to know. Shall we get it started then? Okay, let's get started. Hey you, wake up. Someone wants to talk to you. Ugh. Okay, let's interrogate him. Uh, what do you want? So you have three different options. I'm not really sure exactly how... Um, how it works, how you're supposed to crack him. But uh, I'm going to do this. Maybe we should do something about Tila. Tila? How did you find out about her? Talk or something may happen to her. 
No, please don't hurt her. Please. Okay, let's try something else. See, I'm not exactly sure how all this what works. Um, we know about your companion. What? What companion? Let's see. Perhaps we would give you back to the Sith, but keep him. Of course, they would never believe we let you go so easily, but they would all too happily believe you betrayed them. All right. All right. I'll tell you what you want to know. What's the passcode to the Sith base? It's... It's Zeta 2456980 Alpha. Just no more. Good. With this pass, you should be able to get into the Sith base without trouble. Just don't delay too long or they might learn that he's been captured. Okay, and I say I don't know really how it works because um, I had gotten a success with each conversation topic, all three of them, and it still didn't crack him, so I didn't know really what to do. And I just found that little pattern and it worked <clears throat> it worked uh, a few times so I don't really know what you have to do to crack him but uh, that that seemed to work but okay you know we uh, got rid of Lorgas or whatever his name I forgot his name already Lorgan I don't know so let's go back and talk to Hulis but we have to go alone Welcome back, Grakra. I see you have come alone. This is good. I assume you're here to discuss the business of the... Oh, yeah. Lorgal is dead. Oh, Lorgal. Okay. Uh, the agents I sent to watch you have reported back to me concerning Lorgal's death. You should take pride in the job well done. And as promised, here's your reward for the task. A poison vibroblade forged exclusively for those used in our, within our guild. It will serve you well, I'm sure. This assignment was only the beginning, Gracker. A small test, which I am pleased to say you passed. Now, a more difficult challenge awaits you. There are three targets that the, uh, want you to remove. You can eliminate all three, and then you will gain full membership in our ancient guild. The first is Voren Dasrad. The second is a shapeshifter, Rulan Prolik. The third is a cellcalf known as Itharak Guldar. Okay, tell me about Voren. Vorn is a freelance bounty hunter. He's very, very good, but he's a bit too sadistic for our taste. He likes to sacrifice an efficient kill for the pleasure of watching the, his victims suffer. Well, wow, okay. <laughs> we tolerate a certain amount of competition, but Vorn has become too dangerous. You'd be surprised how much political damage one rogue assassin can inflict. Vorn was last seen on tattooing. We suspect he's taken a break from hunting sentience by going after a great dragon. dragon. We don't want him to leave the Dune Sea alive. Okay. Any tips? Just be careful when you face off against him. Vorn doesn't travel alone. He always has got his assault droid close at hand. Two of them make a formidable pair. Tell me about Rulon Prolik. We don't know much about Rulon except he's some kind of shapeshifter. We don't even know if it's a natural ability or the result of some powerful alien technology. But we suspect he's behind several prominent assassinations on the Outer Rim. We are very worried he might decide to move his operations closer to the galactic core. With his ability to assume virtually any form, he could wreak havoc in a galactic senate. We aren't about to let that happen. Okay, any tips? Finding Rulon won't be easy, but we have reports he may be on Kashyyyk. He's probably honing his skills by hunting the dangerous creatures in the Shadowlands. Tell me about Ithorak. Ithorak isn't violent like Rulon or Vorn, but in many ways he's far more dangerous. He's a con artist and a blackmailer who's taken millions of credits from rich and powerful families. He also deals in secrets and information, and these can be far more deadly than any blaster. But Ithorak is careful. We know he's somewhere on Manan, but we don't know where. All we know, how, all we know is how to contact him. There's a Twi'lek named Beck at the Manan swoop track. He can set up a meeting between you and Ithorak. Okay. Why would Beck set up a meeting between us? Ithorak poses him as a merchant of rare antiquities. It's the perfect cover for his real work. It gives him access to rich and powerful families without drawing suspicion. You'll have to convince Beck that you represent a buyer interested in purchasing some rare art form or art from Ithorak. Convince Beck and he'll set up a meeting. The meeting is your one chance to take Ithorak out, but be careful, he'll choose the time and place, and he's not going to leave himself vulnerable. Is there anything else? Just warning, Gracker, the assignments I've just given you are far more difficult than the simple bounties I gave you as your first test. 
Complete all three missions, and you will have proven yourself to be truly worthy of joining the Geno Herodin. As before, you will be rewarded well for each mission or each successful bounty, whatever. You can return to me after each mission to collect your reward. Anything else? I'll be back later. So we have a lot of quests now. Do I still get to do the the other one? We could do one of two. Um. Let's see. Yeah, okay. So I can still do that one. Okay, good. I, I kind of forgot that he said do one of the two bounties and you'll get harder bounties. I'm glad it didn't take that bounty away. So, let's see. I think I'm about to end the part and I'm not sure really what I want to do in the next part. What I'm thinking is next time we'll head to do these bounties and we'll also head to Yavin. So, yeah, I think I'll do that in the next part. And then we'll come back here on Manon. You know, take a little break from this planet. And uh, come back. Be refreshed. Re-energized for Manon. And uh, take care of the Sith. Whatever. Enclave. Base. Embassy. I don't know what, they're what they want to call it. But uh, let's get all the way to the docking bays. And I'll end the part there. Actually, I'll, I think I'll get on the Evan Hawk and in the part there. As long as I could have just transited it back. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I just wasted a whole bunch of time. Uh, now it's too late to transit back because I'm right here. Oh, fantastic. Okay, well. Evan Hawk is right around the corner now. Well, let's enter. <sighs> Leaving Auto City Security Zone cameras deactivated. You can't skip this, and it's really irritating. Okay, I get it. And then it turns you around to where you're facing outside, to where if you move, I think it'll do it again. So that's kind of frustrating, but, uh. Okay, we are now back aboard the Ebon Hawk finally. So, next time. You know what? We might spend a couple of videos away from Anon. We might talk to party members as well. So, yeah, I think I'll do that. Um, next time I'll talk to some of the party members. And uh, we'll see about going to Yavin as well. And then do the bounties. So, yeah, see you guys then. Thanks for watching.